So, Mark, did you see that new screen on the Raiders stadium? I mean, isn't that an accident waiting to happen driving by? Uh, but I guess uh, a good way to watch football as you're thought, driving on the interstate. I thought it was the sphere. I mean, isn't that what we were promised <laughs> with the sphere? Like a video uh, that they can do whatever they want? No, that is, uh, you know, I'm sure there will be lawsuits in the next six to 12 months based off of uh, fender benders from that video. Like, it's massive. It's weirdly shaped. It's kind of cool looking, but... You know, it's facing towards people driving, which is, uh, I guess they could say it's just the same as a billboard, but it looks very distracting. Yeah, it only took them like an old, like an, an extra year or two to build it after the stadium, but it's there. Be careful when you're when you're driving. Don't uh, don't hit the cars in front of you. Get a Tesla that auto drives. There you go. Then you can watch it all day. Boom. <laughs> Down into the tunnels. <laughs> All right, Mark, let's get into the show. But before we do, don't forget to subscribe, smash the thumbs up button, and uh, leave us some comments. We want to discuss all these topics with you. You can find all links to our podcast, videos, everything Vegas related at mtmvegas.com. Mark, the Riviera was a classic property in Las Vegas. I stayed there on the last night it was open many years ago. And the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority bought the land. They built that massive West Hall expansion. But they were very smart. They left 10 acres on the strip unbuilt on, and they're selling that now for $120 million. They paid, I think, 180 ish million for the Riviera. So they're making their money. Steal. A new, yeah, steal. A new resort casino going to happen. We don't know who the buyer is yet, although we will find out maybe even as we're after we're recording this before it goes up. So if I do find out, I'll put it uh, on the screen here. But expected to close next summer. And what do you think? You excited? I told I've told everybody new. Uh, that's the hot area of the Strip, right across from Resorts World. Yeah, I was I was just thinking like, what if uh, Riviera had stayed open with Resorts World and everything down there? Now would it have been able to hold on and make it? You know, or was just the the cost to kind of redo everything too much? But I, I do feel like that would have got some some action now. You know, long long deserved action. I I'd go in there sometimes when I go to Pepper Mills and gamble for a little bit and I always, you know, had a soft spot for it, but I do wonder, you know, did they make a mistake there? What do you think? Well, I think uh, Riviera overall was doing okay when it closed. I think it was more the convention and visitors authority paying market value for that land to use it for the convention center cuz the Riviera went way back all the way to Paradise, so they had huge parking garages, they had a ton of land that really wasn't being utilized for the hotel or the casino, and that's actually where the West Hall expansion sits. It sits on sort of the back part of the Riviera property, plus the old landmark property. Um, so I think it was a brilliant decision of them to keep that strip frontage so they could sell it, um, you know, keeping their net cost for the land uh, down. And, you know, it, it seems like a, a pretty reasonable price. I mean, it's going to be a hard million, rock. It's going to be a hard rock. It, 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 I mean, it, it's it's a small plot of land, though, 10 acres. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, like, never mind. Like you say, next to Pepper Mill, it's right across from Fontainebleau, which we know is back under construction. Win West is near there. Resorts World just opened. That's where all your new casinos, I think, are going to happen uh, in the next few years. But uh, good to see it. Uh, 120 million for 10 acres on the Strip. It sounds like a lot of money, but it does also, on the other hand, sound like not a lot of money, uh, considering there's so few pieces of land, and that's right across from the brand new uh, casino in town. We're never going to be able to eat Pepper Mill again. Like we're never going to be able to get in there. <laughs> yeah, it's just keep getting busier. <laughs> Well, thankfully, there's more, you know, restaurants. So, you know, hopefully they take some of the, the pressure off uh, Pepper Mill. You know, speaking of Resorts World, they they keep making these like rookie mistakes. I don't know, but they they have their dealers and what they're supposed to do is withhold taxes for the tips. Uh, it's pretty common in the casino industry. Um, this isn't like a new practice. Apparently, they didn't do it. And then now they're having to go back and charge all their dealers hundreds of dollars a paycheck to make up for all the back taxes that they didn't collect. I mean, on one hand, I understand it's a mistake. I don't expect Resorts World to pay people's taxes, but it kind of sucks that they did it. I know a lot of uh, employees are not happy about that. Yeah, the fact that they're doing it over like four checks seems a bit extreme. You could definitely break that out further, make it easier for people to, to handle. You know, you would hope that they would have noticed earlier on the employees that their taxes and being taken out of tips. That That's a pretty substantial amount, but you know, I guess people don't really pay attention. This happened to actually my wife's friend when she switched jobs. They were uh, 
they had her deducting a whole bunch more, like having too many dependents. So they weren't taking enough out of taxes and she got hit with a big tax bill and they ended up, you know, giving her the money to cover it and then took it out over a year. So you would think they would do something more along those terms, like spread it out over however long it, they forgot to do it, spread it out that long, make it a little bit easier, but I don't know. Yeah, that would be tough. I mean, it, you, you got to do it, but for, over four weeks, it's going to hit pretty hard. Yeah, we do have some other Resorts World news. Uh, there's a rumor that David Blaine is going to be a resident or have a residency there. Again, this is just a rumor, so who knows? Although the idea of a David Blaine residency is one that's sort of intriguing to me. I've always kind of followed him. I remember him like on the early days in like, I think Conan back in the 90s doing card tricks. And so I've watched him a long time. Of course, he's done all those crazy stunts and stuff, but he seems like he would be right at home in Vegas uh, at Resorts World. So if that doesn't happen there, I expect, you know, or I don't expect, but I think it would be a great idea for him to perform somewhere in Vegas. Yeah, what, how many residencies are we up to at Resorts World? Like 47, 50? Yeah. Is this well, a, the Adele one didn't happen though. So that that was a false <laughs> uh, rumor. Yeah. Well, it didn't pan out. So I don't, I mean, I don't know, but I, I think- He's got new music dropping on Friday. Everybody's excited. Oh, and, and she'll land somewhere, right? So that the question is with these entertainers, are they making these properties bid uh, against each other? Uh, of course, with Resorts World, they did all singers and that type of stuff. So a magic show could be a nice little, you know, break from everything else that they're doing. So it does fit well in there. And we did get a look, a first look inside the theater there, uh, which is supposed to open, I think about a month from now. And Mark, it looks, it just looks like a theater. I mean, uh, it looks very <laughs> no <corporate>. surprise there. <laughs> it's like the most bland theater somebody could imagine. And that fits exactly with what Resorts World does. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know about that. I mean, it's just, a, uh, it's just a theater, but it's, a theater, it, it's yeah. supposed to be state it's of the a, art. It's a sphere, though. It's not a sphere. Come on. I mean, put a put a round top on it, and then then you can call it good. I guess. I don't know. There's no there's no light shows. There's no screens on the outside. It is supposed to be state of the art. So think park uh, theater at Park MGM. That's going to be a competitor uh, to this. So the show should be good. Hopefully, the sound is good. Unlike you know what we see at Allegiant Stadium and and elsewhere. So. I don't know. It's a it's a theater. Yeah, we'll, you would we'll throw up some pictures. I would hope that they'd have it dialed in. You know, Legion isn't really made to do. They just do that as like a secondary thing. So you can understand having a little bit of issues. Plus, it's outdoors. All right. So let's move to the South Strip. We talked last week about Durango being approved. That's the Durango Hotel and Casino owned by Station Casinos in the southwest part of the valley. One thing that I failed to mention that I should have brought up was that Station Casinos currently still owns three closed casinos in Las Vegas. Uh, the Fiestas and the Texas Station, which you can see in our closed casinos video. But another hotel was approved this week, the Dream Hotel. This is going to be located on the South Las Vegas Strip, right across or sort of across from Mandalay Bay, right next to the brand new Pinball Hall of Fame, sort of in between that and the Harley Davidson uh, dealership. There was a lot of like concerns because it's right on the airport property that people could, well, you know, think about the October 1st shooting, all of that sort of thing. So they've they've had to alter the designs. They got rid of balconies. They have to put up these giant like barrier on the backside to, you know, block the airport from the hotel, all kinds of stuff, but they got over it. It's going to be built. It's a boutique hotel, small, but a new hotel on the strip. That's always exciting. Yeah. I'm a little surprised that, you know, I get it with recent events, why they would be a little more cautious, but you know, you see airports like this everywhere else and they, they have balconies and Mandalay Bay is just across the street. So it's not like it's that a huge amount of distance closer and they have, a, they'll have a higher vantage point. If you, if somebody's going to want to do something like that, you know, that's already kind of there for them. So I, I don't know. I, it was interesting to see how even the airlines were against it and, you know, all the security uh, FBI and stuff were like, Hey, this isn't good. Let's change that. Let's change this. They're worried about getting access from behind the property, but you know, you go to Orlando, the high Regency there has, outdoor balconies overlooking the the runways and everything so I, I, what's different just because it's vegas you think yeah i i think so I, I, one good example of a hotel like this is the grand hyatt in sfo which just opened a couple of years ago i mean you're looking right down at the gates with all the international stuff from your room uh so yeah there were concerns i could understand you know that not the balcony situation but they even have to put like alarms on the glass of the window so if somebody can't break out a window and start shooting at the airport um, according to the article, it says that the Porter Cachet was moved, letting the developers shift the tower away from the airport property line and towards the boulevard. And it's going to have a nine foot tall, double reinforced security wall 
with guardrails, wrought iron fencing. So it sounds like it's going to be like this prison complex on the backside to you know to keep you from the yeah even the uh, even the, the pool is going to be you know they're going to have a rooftop pool which would be really cool you have it at JFK a rooftop pool overlooking yeah. the airport but now they have to put up these tall walls so you still see airplanes and you know similar to higher Regency at, at parts has uh, the one in Orlando has walls uh, you know at certain aspects of the pool area but that's kind of sad too like that would have been a really cool experience for people Anybody that's big into airplanes would have loved to sit up there and and check it out. But, uh, you know, you got to do what you got to do these days. Yeah. I mean, the the other interesting thing about that area is Janet Airlines. Uh, have you ever heard of Janet? No. OK, so Janet Airlines Janet from friends. Is that what we're talking about? <laughs> no, it's these. if you've ever if you're ever in Vegas and you see a white plane with a red stripe on it, that's Janet. And that's the government owned airline that flies workers from Vegas to the various sort of confidential sites like Area 51, things like that. And so they operate a whole fleet of aircraft, I think four or five of them, and it operates right behind where this will be. And so I think there was some concern with the government uh, stuff happening there because those are, you know, that's not, that's a, a very sort of top secret kind of thing. But on a side note, if you ever see that, that plane flying up, that's Janet. They take people from Vegas, they fly them up to various points around the desert, out in the middle of nowhere. It's our super secret alien airline or... I don't know. What do you what are your thoughts on the hotel? Do you think it will do? I mean, we haven't seen a ton of renderings or anything, but how do you think it will do with the location and being kind of like themed as an airport hotel? You know, do you think that's something Vegas was missing or it's such a quick trip to the strip from the airport? I don't know that it's necessary. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know that this is going to be like a destination property, but I think there's going to be some appeal for people who want to stay in a smaller property. I mean, the, the kind of thing about this being an airport hotel is that the entrance to the airport's off Tropicana, not off Las Vegas Boulevard. So hotels like Virgin or even MGM Grand, Tropicana, all those hotels are actually closer to the airport than this will be. So I don't know if it really works as an airport hotel. I just think it's going to be an alternative. It's not huge. Uh, the Pinball Hall of Fame is there. That south area of the Strip, they're sort of developing some of these lots of land. So I think it'll do fine uh, there as well. And just... You know, I'm never going to miss an opportunity to bring up the Little Church of the West where I was married. That's also just next door to there. So <laughs> you, can, you can have your reception or whatever, a honeymoon at the Dream Hotel while you get married at the same place Elvis and Sean Coomer did. So there you go. Sean Coomer here, Elvis down here. No, not quite, not quite that. But uh... <laughs> All right. So Nobu is beginning their refresh at Caesars Palace. And uh, we both stayed at Nobu last year. And we like the rooms. I think the rooms are too small for our luxury hotel. You know, I'm obsessed with room sizes, Mark always says. Uh, although I did love the bathroom and the shower. And I thought the decor was really nice, although a little bit worn. And I do like the new renderings of the rooms. I think they're going to look good. All 182 guest rooms are being redone, as well as the public areas of it. And they're supposed to all be finished by the end of 2021. They charge a lot of money for these rooms. I'm glad to see they're getting some love. Yeah, definitely. It was, you know, it's showing some wear and tear, so... It doesn't need a ton, I don't think. I mean, you can't really do anything about the room size. So just, you know, some updates, some paint, some new furniture, that type of thing. It will do a lot. And I think we've we've talked about in the past, the real selling feature of Nobu is, you know, private check-in a little bit easier. You're, you're not waiting for elevators forever. You can get to your room quickly right in the middle of the gaming floor. So it's all those aspects that's really leaned to more so than the room, which the rooms were were, de were pretty good and now they'll be even better. So it definitely offers value if you, if you care about ease of, you know, on property, getting around as well as checking in, checking out, all that stuff. Somebody's right by the elevators for you. So I think it's a good move. Yeah, I'm never going to tell somebody not to stay at Nobu. I think it's a great hotel. I think it's probably the best rooms in Caesars, although I prefer the bigger rooms, even though I don't think they're as nice. So as long as you know what you're getting there and you are willing to pay for it, I think it's a good property. And I think all the things you mentioned are definitely selling points for it. And uh, glad to see they're getting some love. I think most of the Caesars Palace rooms have been renovated over the last few years. So there's really not a terrible room there. Uh, but these are definitely the best. And along with that Nobu, we talked last week, of course, about the Nobu restaurant um, that's going into Paris. But also, I forgot to mention that Nobu opened briefly at Bally's. So basically, the one at Paris is just them sort of moving the Nobu over. Because I think it opened for like a month or two before COVID, the one at Bally's. And now that's gone along with all the other restaurants at Bally's. We still don't know what's uh, what's going on there, but I did want to say like Nobu is 
is definitely a brand all around town. There's also, so there's a Nobu restaurant at Caesars Palace. There's the one going in uh, at Paris, and then there is one at Virgin Hotels. It's one of the restaurants that carried over uh, from the time of Hard Rock. So Nobu all over. I don't think it was open. I don't think it was open when we went and checked uh, checked out Virgin, was it? I don't remember seeing anybody going in or out. So I don't know if they have it's weird a, hours or. Yeah, it's been open. I've certainly seen it open, um, but I don't. You're, I agree with you. During the week, maybe it's not open. A lot of the restaurants were closed when we went there. Um, I think things are opening up a little bit more. Like the Italian restaurant opened since we had visited, and I think Nobu was definitely on limited hours. But it's it's back for sure uh, over at Virgin. All right, Mark. So I've been doing. A lot of TikTok this week, trying to figure out how we could potentially bring good Vegas content to people on TikTok. So the first thing I want to say is follow us at MTM underscore Vegas on TikTok. If you're interested in our miles and points, travel hacking stuff at miles to memories. But I was going through stuff and I found some cool stuff, uh, some food related things uh, that I wanted to share. Some really interesting kind of unique food places off the strip. Jesse Ray's barbecue. Let's start with that. The fortress, you take like a rack of ribs, you like put it in a, like a, make it a bucket out of it. You put meat inside, macaroni and cheese. It looks amazing, doesn't it? I got it. It's like 40 bucks, I think. And he says it's, it can feed four people or one person uncomfortably. That'd be me. <laughs> <laughs> one person uncomfortably. Yeah, I, I'm surprised to hear four. I mean, it did, it did look like a lot of food, but I don't know if it looked like four people worth of food, but maybe that's just the video. It doesn't look as big as it is in real life, but yeah, it looked like a cool idea. You're getting pretty much everything you would normally get when you order that type of food, but it's all like in one contained thing. So kind of a unique presentation for it. Yeah, and I've heard good things about Jesse Ray's barbecue, although I haven't eaten there personally. I haven't eaten any of these three personally, but they're all very unique. So the next one is the Cereal Killer's Kitchen. This is a place that has every kind of cereal you can imagine, and you can just go there and eat them. And I think that would be pretty cool. I want to go in there and kind of see some of the flavors they have. I'm sure they, they have stuff that you can't get regionally and things like that, but they have a challenge and they have 150 types of cereal. They have a challenge for $30. You get this giant bowl of cereal where they mix in like a suicide and they mix in all the different types of cereal along with a gallon of milk. And if you finish it, I guess within 45 minutes, you get it for free along with a t-shirt. 30 bucks seems kind of cheap for this challenge, but are you, are you up for like mixing all the cereals together? Just buy the t-shirt. Just go in and buy <laughs> The concept sounds but, cool though, right? Yeah, it's good. I mean, I wonder if they put like vitamin D milk in it so that they know nobody will finish it, you know, because you can't drink vitamin D milk that quickly. I don't know if that's a trick. If you ever want to win a challenge or mess with one of your friends, have them uh, chug a gallon of vitamin D milk. They won't be able to hold it down. But uh, I don't think they're doing this, but <laughs> it is something unique. Uh, you know, you always see these challenge things. I think it's the first time I've ever seen anything involving cereal. But I don't know of any other cereal only restaurants or cereal focused restaurants. So, you know, it is a it's a cool idea. I'm sure there will be people that take them up on it. All right. And now the other thing that I wanted to bring up, we all know what bath bombs are, right? You throw them in, put water on them, they dissolve. Well, you can have a uh, like a hot pot bath bomb. The X pot is the name of the restaurant. They have their broth bomb, which, again, uh, we'll throw it up here. It looks it looks amazing, tasty, unique. All three of these places are uh, are serving some some cool stuff and uh, TikTok. I was glad to find some interesting places to share with you, although my brain's a little fried, admittedly, from all those videos one minute at a time. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's good for me. <laughs> do you do a dance? Did you uh, for your first video upload? Are you going to do a dance or something? I actually created a video for G two E and I posted it and then I took it down because there was something I haven't gone back to to redoing it. Um, so I don't know. We will have some some interesting concept, but I uh, some interesting content. But I do uh, still got to figure it all out. But yeah, definitely, I got to do a dance, right? You know, hopefully, I'll get you up there doing a dance eventually. No, nope, nope. But you yeah. do the Applebee's dance. There you go. There is a lot of like suspect <laughs> content on TikTok, um, Vegas related. I, I I found some decent stuff because there's a lot of stuff like this where they're just highlighting places. Uh, but I will do plan on doing mini hotel reviews, doing a lot of that, all this knowledge that we share here, trying to, to bring it to that, to that platform. But I do hope people enjoyed the, the food, the look at the food. All right. One last thing, Mark, last week I was at G2E. I got a chance to like, look at the location tech that they're using for these, for these apps, the sports betting apps, the, you know, things like DraftKings, uh, the casino apps in many states, I think seven states have legalized 
online casinos. So it was crazy. At the show, they showed us a map of every person using these apps and they showed us Michigan, they showed us Nevada, but in Michigan, what, what they do is they're like, they have many different layers of how they're checking uh, what your location is. You've had it where like they, you're in the state of Michigan, but it thinks you're not in the state of Michigan, right? Like when you're close to the border or yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, if we're like on the shore near uh, Canada, Windsor, or even going down towards Ohio or something, if you get too close, sometimes it will register and say you're outside the boundary, even though you're not. So yeah, it, it and it, I know you're going to explain it in a minute, but it, it kind of depends what you're doing, where you're going, how you're going, yeah. that type of thing. Yeah, so they're looking at like how often you're betting, how fast you're moving, so if you're close to a border and they think that you're gonna, you possibly could cross the border before they can uh, do another check, they'll they'll block you. Um, all kinds of stuff. They're watching your Wi-Fi networks. They're basically taking every bit of data they can get about your phone and geolocating you that way because they're trying to stop you from using VPNs and all kinds of different technology to route it. So there's multiple levels of what they're trying to do. I tried to get them to say, okay, I was in Michigan, you know. A few months a few months ago and my wife was using DraftKings app and we were in the middle of the state not near a border not near anything and it kept telling us we weren't there i tried to get her to explain why that would happen and she just kept blaming my device so yeah tech the tech isn't all there i've had it where it says like oh we registered you somewhere else and like they locked the account you have to call in and they said yeah we saw that you were in michigan then you were in illinois and we think that you're sharing your account and i was like what are you talking about like they're like, oh, it must have been a bit like a bad connection to your Wi-Fi or something. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. So they definitely have some glitchiness to them. It's gotten a lot better than it was, you know, five, six months ago, but it still does happen from time to time. Yeah, I think the number one takeaway I had was that their compliance is the is the big issue for them. So anytime there's any doubt, they're just going to stop you. They're not going to allow it to go through. So there's like many layers of checks that if you fail any one of them, it's all over. But it was another piece of cool tech that I saw on the casino floor I thought was worth mentioning. And uh, I'll have that in the in the whole G2E video uh, coming soon. But that's going to do it for this week's show. Don't forget to leave a comment. Let us know what you think about the Dream Resort, the Raiders trying to make everybody crash on the freeways, or anything else in between. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up button. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. See you next time. <laughs>